assessment of young people. Okay. So I think I have been volunteering or engaging community service activities from a very small age. Um, in high school, I was a part of Key Club, then in university, Circle Key, and I later became a rotor after. So I was always engaging community service activities. In 2009, though, I entered the JCDC Miss Manchester Festival Queen mm -hmm. competition, and it provided a platform to formalize some of the work that I was already doing. That was your project at that time? It was called Young Women of Purpose. So I was actually an instructor with Heart Trust, and I was already mentoring my students, especially the females in my class. And so when I won the competition and it gave me that platform to create the community service activities, I said, okay, I want to continue to focus on women who mm -hmm. experience challenges to help them to understand that they can achieve whatever they believe in and whatever they want despite the challenges that they face. And your target with whom you work, is it, is it women your age or is it, is it women older than you? Is it what, what age group you work with? So it's actually 13 to 25 years. Okay. Mind you, some of our projects um, do ex um, go beyond 25 years. So we mm -hmm. have we've had women who are 32 and even in their 40s. Because I'm wondering, right? If you, Lenisa, come to me and say you want to teach me about life mm -hmm. and my strong age of, you know. I mean, do you get skepticism ever? Or what, what can this young girl really tell me about finding my purpose and so on and so forth? Has that ever been an experience for you? Yeah, so I mean, basically for me, I share my story and my experiences. So even though I, I still consider myself young, I've had quite a number of experiences both locally and internationally. I mean, I have found my purpose. It's what I'm doing right now. And so because of that, I am able to help other persons using some of the things that I use to find their purpose. What you have said is so powerful. Say it again. You found your purpose. I have found my purpose so there, and I'm living it. This, so, there, so there, I find out you tap into that source. You just cannot go wrong after no. that. Um, and that, I think, helps other people who just don't know how or if they have from theirs. Right. What, when, when working with the group that you work with, 13 to 25, how do you get them to hone in on what that is? Because I find that's such a, a sweet spot for a lot of people, but you just sometimes just don't know what your purpose is. Right. And that's true for many, many people. Um, what I usually do is to ask persons different questions. So what do you like to do? What do you enjoy doing? What is that one thing that you would do without being paid? You know, what do you think about all the time? And what are your skills? If you don't know it, I always ask, what do people say that you are good at? Mm -hmm. Right? So those are some of the questions that I ask to help people to discover their purpose. Those are great questions, by the way. So as a leader, um, there's so much you have to live up to, especially having, you know, won all these awards, Commonwealth Youth Award for Excellence in Development Work, Jamaica Governor General's Award for Youth Leadership and Community Development. You've been awarded for your contributions in the field of business. Um, Freer Magazine honored you as one of 25 distinguished uh, women on International Women's Day, and I could read the rest of it, but then the program would finish and we wouldn't talk to anybody else. Um, what are some of the, the tips that you can give for women who are aspiring to be leaders in their fields? What keeps you going? What keeps you grounded? What keeps you um, achieving and achieving and, and out achieving yourself year on year? So first you have to know what it is that you want to achieve. Um, as a leader, you can't do it alone. So you have to be open to working with people. And for me, I really embrace the term servant leadership. As a leader, you have to be a servant, not only serving your beneficiaries or your customers, but also serving your team, because it does make a difference. Another thing that I would say, you have to be a doer. So it's not just a thinker or somebody who speaks a lot, but what actions are you taking? Because that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. A difference. You also have to lead by example. So you can't set rules that you only expect your team to follow. You also have to be following those. I want that walk. Because they're looking yeah. on at you. Yes. And they want to see if you're preaching. Yes. Is, or practicing what it is that you preach. Yes. Yeah. And you also need to empower the people around you. So empower others on your team to lead, to take charge, and involve them in decision-making process. Mm -hmm. Another tip is to be authentic and be open to being vulnerable. It's in being vulnerable that people actually relate and connect with you, and yes. that makes a difference in the and team. And I find a lot of leaders don't think it's okay to be vulnerable, but it is so fantastically 
Yeah, it's just a it's just a great thing to do because people get to tap into that human side of you and see that you're not a dragon. No. Okay. Yeah. I agree. I fully agree. We have one more. One more is um, be a visionary. So you, you cannot only lead for today, but you need to have that vision to see where do you want to take your organization or your company and share it with the people around you, share it with those who also see the vision. And sometimes one of my experiences has been when I just started, it really wasn't my vision. One of my team members who started with me, she was the one who saw the organization growing and going way beyond what, what I even imagined. So you need, you will attract visionaries around you too, so that is key. Of course, so it's young women on purpose, young men, and be working with men as well. Yes, yeah, so it's young women and men on purpose. Yeah. We expanded after a year, uh, because men were asking what about us. Of course, <laughs> of course. And yeah. tell, me, tell me what this has done for you since you started the organization. What has it personally um, done for Lanisa? Yeah. I've grown a lot, so um, generally, I am more reserved or introverted, but uh, maybe I still am a little, <laughs> but I'm still, I'm not afraid to do, to take action. And so I've grown, I am more confident in terms of speaking mm -hmm. and sharing with others. Clearly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, and it has just helped me in terms of personal, re personal relationships, um, also networking, connecting with people, learning from people. I mean, it has opened my, my mind in terms of when I get the opportunity to, tra to travel, to learn from other experts, learn what they're doing, and to use that to implement and to build the organization and the people around me. Okay, and so what are your next steps We're from here? So we're 10 years old <laughs> this wow. year. Um, it's hard mm -hmm. to imagine, but we're 10. So as an organization, our focus now is in terms of sustainability. It's not easy to run an NGO. Mm -hmm. So we are focused on how can we actually generate revenue so that we can actually continue the programs that we do freely for other people. Yeah, yes. yeah. life of an NGO up, um, head or operator is not an easy road. No. Well, you try it and you're trying it well. Wish you all the best. If there are young women and men watching who want to get involved with you, where do we find you? You can find us on social media, Young Women and Men of Purpose. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also have a website, www.ywop.org. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank Social entrepreneur and founder of Young Women and Young Men of Purpose, Lenisia Roden. We have more after News in 5.